The Forensic Imaging module allows the investigator to create and even restore disk image files, which are bit-by-bit -bit copies of a partition, a physical disk, or volume. Disk imaging is essential in securing an exact duplicate of a storage device, so it can be used for forensic analysis without risking the integrity of the original data. The Forensic Imaging module in OS Forensics has seven tabs, each with a specific task. Let's look at each tab in greater detail. In the first tab, which is labeled Create Disk Image, Users can create a forensic image of a specified source disk. Users can add numerous imaging jobs to the queue, as shown here in this slide, for as many devices as they can connect to their system. After selecting Add, users will need to choose both the source disk and a target location for the image file to be written out to. OS Forensics offers the option to create the image file in a variety of popular image file formats such as RAW, EO1, or even the new open source AFF4 format. The Verify Image File After Completion option is checked by default. This operation verifies the image file hash against the source disk hash. This can take as long as the initial imaging, thereby doubling the time for the entire process but ensures that the resulting image file is a 100% bit-for-bit duplicate of the source. Users can enable the option to attach image metadata file to case on completion, which will add a TXT imaging log file to the case automatically. The Disable Shadow Copy option can be left checked unless you are performing an imaging job on a live system. For instance, if you are using an OSF USB to live image a running system, the operation would then make use of the volume shadow copy service built into Windows to allow OS Forensics to make a copy of drives that are in use without resulting in data corruption from reading files that are currently being written to, such as with live systems, as Windows is constantly modifying it. Once a shadow copy is started, a snapshot state of the drive is frozen at that point in time. So even if important evidence is being removed by another process in the background, it will still appear in the resulting image file. If the shadow copy service is not available, OS Forensics will try to lock the drive to prevent any other programs from writing to it. If this is not possible, a warning will appear. Drives copied without a shadow volume or a lock are prone to creating corrupt images on completion. You will also have the option of choosing a primary and secondary hashing function for hashing the source disk in a resulting image file. For instance, you could choose SHA-256 and MD5 or any other combination of supported hashing algorithms. Once you are finished adding the imaging job or jobs to the queue, simply press the Create Image button to begin the imaging process. Our next tab is the Restore Image to Disk tab. This feature returns the disk contents in the image file back to a surrogate drive, allowing an investigator to observe the changes that occur on the disk while being attached to the live system. This may be useful if an investigator wishes to boot an image of a system disk on a live machine in order to view the state of the system from the user's perspective. To accomplish this, simply choose the image file on the target disk to write the image file out to. Once these have been set, simply click on the Restore Image button. Our next tab over is the Rebuild RAID Array tab. A forensic investigator may need to deal with physical disks that are part of a RAID configuration from time to time. Without having access to the RAID controller needed to recreate the RAID array, it may be difficult to reconstruct the logical disk for forensic analysis. So given a set of disk images, OS Forensics can rebuild the logical image based on the specified RAID parameters. RAID parameters from software RAID created under Linux and Windows can be automatically detected. 
Simply add the individual disk images via the Add button, choose the correct RAID configuration if known, and click Create Image. The stripe size settings sets the size of the smallest unit of contiguous data addressable in a RAID array. In order to rebuild the logical image, the stripe size, along with the disk ordering specified by the RAID configuration, determines how the source disk images are striped to form the logical image. If the check parity slash redundancy option is checked, the parity blocks, if present, are checked to verify the integrity of the RAID array. If a sector is unreadable, it will fill that sector with zeros and continue on in the process. This field lets you know how much data was unreadable, if any, due to restricted access or in the event of a damaged disk. Next over, we'll look at the Create Logical Image tab. Creating a logical image allows the investigator to copy files and directories from one or more source devices to a destination folder or image file, preserving as much file system metadata as possible. This is useful for cases where making a complete drive image of the evidence device is not preferable. Note that while the directory structure, file contents, and some metadata are preserved, some data may be lost from the operation, such as slack space, fragmentation, unallocated space, uh, deleted files, etc. You can create a logical image of a single file or files, a directory or collection of folders, a user account, or an entire drive. You can now also use this feature to perform cloud imaging, such as for a Gmail or Dropbox account, by using our Export Cloud Drive or Export Cloud Email options. These options can also be found on the OSF Start screen or from the drop-down option shown above. We'll get to cloud imaging in just a few minutes, though. You can create a logical image from folders or files, uh, or folders or files or directories from numerous source drives for a truly customized logical image creation. OS Forensics uses a non-proprietary format for our logical images, unlike the majority of our competitors. We create the logical image in a VHD or virtual disk uh, image format. This way, regardless of who needs access to the image, anyone with any tools should be able to view the contents of the logical images. Most all tools and even Windows supports mounting VHD image files. To add content to your logical image from within this module, simply make a selection of either Add File or Add Folder, then click on the button. You will then be prompted to choose what you wish to add to the logical image. You will keep repeating this process until all data sources have been added to the source paths list. Next, choose a destination to where you want to write the logical image to. Once this is done, you can simply select Start to initiate the imaging process. Keep in mind you can also add content to a logical image as you conduct your examination from within numerous other modules in OS Forensics. Here we see how easy it is via the right-click menu to add a user directory to the logical image from the File System Browsers module. While the operation is running, a log is generated which contains the files and directories which were copied, general status messages, and any error messages. The most common reason for failure is that they are locked by another process or the current user does not have permissions to access them. The log can be exported to a text file and or added to the case as an attachment. Once you select either the email or drive option, you will be prompted to confirm your authorization to access the cloud account to which you are attempting to create a logical image of. You must check mark the authorization box and provide your name. For this example, we chose to image a Gmail account. After providing authorization confirmation, I'm then directed to choose from all available Gmail accounts on the system. You will then likely be taken to this page where you will need to click on the advanced link in order to proceed. Next, I'll need to confirm my choices 
and then click allow. After this you should then see this confirmation screen at which time you can close the browser. You will then be directed back to OS Forensics where you will see the account added to the Sorth Path section and you will be presented with folder options to include or exclude from your extraction. All, all folders are check marked by default. Once your settings are correct, click OK. You must provide a name and a path for the cloud image at this time. As you can see, the image is created, like other logical images, in the virtual disk image or VHD format. The final step in this process is to simply click Start, at which point the extraction process will begin. Once the process begins, the log window will show all processes in real time from beginning to completion. I can then view the contents of the VHD that I've just created in Windows or back into OS Forensics where I'll find an inbox email file containing the emails from the account I just imaged. The VHD image can be added to uh, your OS Forensics case and the inbox file contained in the VHD can then be read by the OS Forensics email viewer module and analyzed further for evidence. Check out this video on our YouTube channel for a tutorial on our cloud imaging feature. The next tab over is the Create Logical Android Image. OS Forensics allows users to generate logical extractions from Android devices. Once you have connected an Android mobile device to your computer, you will need to ensure Windows and ultimately OS Forensics recognizes the device. In order for OS Forensics to see it, it will need to be placed into developer mode with USB debugging enabled. There's no way around this, so if you cannot enable USB debugging on the device for some reason, this feature will not work. Once the device has been placed in USB debugging mode, connect the device to your computer, then make the correct connection type selection between the device and your system when prompted on the handset. Keep in mind this setting can be different from handset to handset. This is sometimes a trial and error type of process selecting a different connection or transfer type option until you find the correct one for that device. After making a selection on the handset, click the refresh button in OS Forensics. If a specific setting doesn't work, reconnect the device, choose a different connection type setting, and click refresh again. Once the device is recognized by OS Forensics, you can continue to the next step. In addition to files such as images and videos, you can extract valuable phone data such as SMS, MMS, and contacts via the OSF Extract app, which will be installed to the handset if this option is enabled. You will need to complete the required actions on the Android handset. Here's a look at the OSF Extract app on the Android device. You will need to give it the required permissions and select Transfer on the mobile handset. OS Forensics will begin extracting the phone artifacts such as SMS, MMS, and contacts. Once the phone specific artifacts are collected, OSF will begin acquiring the user files from the Android file system. Depending on the amount of data, this process can be time consuming. When completed, you will need to add the newly created logical image file to your case through the Add Device module as shown here. To analyze the SMS, MMS, and other phone related type of artifacts from the image, go to the Android Artifacts module from the OS Forensic Start screen. Add the Android logical image if not already populated and click Scan. You can then double click on the artifacts to view them. Here we see the contacts from the logical image extraction. 
Keep in mind for photos and other media type files, they are best viewed in the file name search module. For media and other types of files, simply go to the file name search module, make sure the phone image is selected, and choose a file type preset from the presets options. Here we see where we selected the large images preset. Once the scan is completed, click on Thumbnails tab to view all the image files. Okay, so we've covered the logical Android image function as well as how to analyze that image once acquired. So let's get back to the remainder of the tabs in the Forensic Imaging module. Next tab over is the, devi in the, is the Device and Smart Info tab. You're able to view disk device specifics such as make, model, serial number, interface type, number of partitions, disk geometry, and much more. The bottom section displays what's called the SMART info if, if available on the selected drive. SMART stands for Self-Monitoring Analysis and Reporting Technology and is a monitor, monitoring system included in computer hard disk drives, solid state drives, and eMMC drives. Its main purpose is to detect various indicators of drive reliability with the intent of anticipating hardware failures before they occur. Both the device info and or the smart info can be added separately to your case if need be or exported by selecting the appropriate button as shown here. And our final tab in the Forensic Imaging module is the Disk Hidden Areas dash HPA slash DCO tab. Now an HPA or host protected area in the DCO, which is a device configuration overlay, are hidden areas on a hard drive that are normally inaccessible to the majority of users and software. They're typically created by disk manufacturer. OS forensics can detect the presence of an HPA or DCO and can even create forensic binary images of these hidden areas if located. This helps investigators to conduct a targeted analysis on just the content inside of an HPA or DCO to ensure there was nothing hidden there by the user. You also have the option of removing the HPA or DCO, which removes the hidden area but does not delete the data stored within and only then makes them accessible to the majority of your forensics tools. Once a hidden area has been detected, use the image button that corresponds to the particular hidden area. This will allow you to save the contents of the area as an image file, which will uh, allow us to save the contents of the detected HPA or DCO for analysis. You can examine the image file using the file system browser and the internal viewer. Navigate to the location where the image was saved, right click on the image file and choose the view with internal viewer options. Now you will be able to see the hex contents of the area and use the other internal viewer functions like extract strings.